Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bolt and Break. And it's been a while. I'm delighted to be doing a tutorial again. There's been lots of life events. I have not had the time to do a tutorial that I deem worthwhile for the wonderful community that is subscribed to Bone and Break. And if you aren't subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Let's get started. We are going to be creating this really cool abstract looking frame, style frame with the Redshift camera. And we're going to be using some kind of unconventional techniques you can also do really nice animations with this i call it painting with light so without further ado let's get started okay press our middle mouse button so we can have our four views here we're going to go to our spline here hold it down use the line object we're going to press shift c type in cloner we're then going to bring our line under our cloner we're going to select our cloner use radial and we're going to set the plane to XY. Um, I'm going to come in here. We're going to actually create a camera. We're going to select our camera and just make sure the coordinates are straight. So we're not tilting. Go into our camera view. There's a line it there, so it's in the middle. Select your line, right click, go to render tags and have the redshift render tag applied. Go to mode and just put in hair strands for now. Let's get your redshift render view going here. OK, very cool. We are then going to get a circle here. We're going to press T, hold shift so we scale in proportion, bring it down so it's kind of close to the middle here. It's going to bring our camera in a little bit. Go back to the circle, press T, hold control and scale down and just do that again. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to press shift C, get a connect object, select these three circles put them into the connect object, select your redshift render tag and apply it to the connect object. And that saves you from putting three redshift render tags on each circle, which is great. We don't want to weld this, so we're going to untick that. Bring your hair strand down to 0.5. Okay, cool. Now, how do we start to get this look? Because this looks weird and basic. I agree. So what we want to do is first create a material and it has to be incandescent. Apply it to our connect. We apply it to our line. We're going to call this glow. So we have our material here, our incandescent material. That just means the material is self illuminating. So basically a material that glows or is light. We're going to dock it here. Um, there's a weird bug in cinema at the moment where when you dock the panel, it just decides not to work. But if you just click on and off these panels here, you can get it to um, work again. OK, so select your incandescent material. Let's bring the intensity up to 100 uh, and make sure the render is on and that will bring the intensity up. So if we were to bring in your post effects here, center this and bring on your bloom, you'll start to see some glow, which is nice. Let's begin to play with the redshift camera settings now. <coughs> This is very experimental. There is no set rule to get some set look. You really have to experiment with different parameters in the optical panel of the Redshift camera. There are some things I can explain. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our bokeh. We're going to bring it down to 0.1 and you can already see you're getting an interesting result. When I'm doing this kind of work, I tend to work with bladed because you have more control. You have to imagine this as working with a real life lens and you can control the prop physical properties within a lens. If you know how cameras work or have any idea how cameras work, um, this gets quite intuitive really quickly. If you don't, it's worth going away and learning about how cameras work, the blades, the diaphragm, the lens itself. Um, that's why it's always recommended that if you're going to do any advanced camera work in 3D that you know how to use a real world camera. Here we have the aspect that is essentially aspect ratio. So, you know, you go left um, to a, a negative value. You're going to squeeze it vertically. If you go right, you're going to squeeze it horizontally. We're going to keep that at one. And then the spherical aberration. This is this sharpens the blades of the lens. So you have blades in a lens um, and these blades, you are basically sharpening. You get really soft aberration here. If you go to zero, you're not going to get any. Um, and then the blades, the more blades you add, the more curvature you're adding to your bokeh. So let's bring these right up and you get this really weird, interesting look because you have 64 blades. 
and you've set your aberration to 100. If we bring this to 50, you can see it gets a little bit sharper. Uh, let's bring it up to one um, and more blurred. You get more definition basically in this. And if you were to bring your blades to, I don't know, let's divide this by two, uh, divide by two again, divide by two again, you get these kind of really sharp lines, but we don't want that. We want it to be a bit smooth. And then again, the other parameter here is your focus distance. So uh, we're going to actually, let's come out of our perspective view and you can see here how the focus view is going to work. The further the focus is, let's put this in a null. You can see our objects are here. And as we come closer to it, the focus gets a little bit sharper. As we go away, we get more of that blurred painterly look. So we don't really want it to be too much in focus, but if you want to sharpen your image, you could also bring this closer in. So hope this is all making sense. So let's bring our focus distance far away for now. We will be experimenting with that. We want to go back into our incandescent material. I'm gonna bring in a ramp and we are going to pump this ramp into the color. And this ramp plays a big part in like really bringing this aesthetic together. So we're gonna go with black violet as our gradient here. And this is very cool. We're going to change the end ramp to a more reddish color. Let's go back into our aperture again and bring this down to 0 0.05. And this will really blur it out. We're gonna bring our focus distance right up to about 7,000. And this is looking really cool then into our post effects and turn on streak bring down the threshold right down and just bring in some tails bring up the number of streaks probably a little bit intense so maybe and this is looking very cool we're going to bring our count up so you could start to see as you bring more lines into this picture you get these sharper edges which gives you this glow and um, we're going to actually bring our camera out a little bit i think it's too close um, and i think for now our incandescent material is done so we're going to come off that and we're just going to enlarge this a little bit so you get those sharper bladed corners on these um lines here you can also go into your circles here and you know bring your points down to one and you get a sharper edge and you also get this really nice almost pattern like fractal pattern here and um, that is quite cool and um, you could also use an end side that might actually be better so let's bring in an end side what size is this let's bring this end side make that 20. delete your circles here Even that's nice. Um, and then we're going to scale this inside up and up again. Turn the middle one, just bring that down. And bring it down there, just a little bit more space. So even if we bring our end sides, we can control the sharpness there. And that's quite nice. So there you have it. It's a really interesting way to play with the bokeh and the redshift camera. You can essentially create these kind of fractal, glowing, ethereal hazes of light, which is quite nice. And you can add beautiful post effects to it. And you get this, what I would call very, very pleasing aesthetic. Um, and just play with these parameters and just think logically about the shape the sharpness of the shape. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.